I'm Ahmad Yunus, a senior technical marketing engineer here at VMware. And today we're going to discuss three things. We're going to talk about migration and upgrades from a vSphere 5.5 environment to a vSphere 6.5 environment. We're also going to talk about getting to an enhanced link mode uh, type manner where I can manage all my vCenter servers from any one of my uh, vSphere web clients. And last, we are going to talk about consolidating our vSphere 5.5 SSO domains so that way we can actually use, use that to manage our enhanced link mode and manage our entire infrastructure from one vSphere uh, SSO domain. So let's get started. Up here on the whiteboard, I have three different sites that are siloed by three different SSO domains. So the first one I have is NYC, uh, which is an embedded deployment running SSO and a Windows vCenter server. I also have an external database and an external VUM server running here. And the other two sites, in the one in Houston and the one in Palo Alto mirror that. But again, they cannot communicate uh, with one another, so they're pretty much siloed. So our first step to, to getting them consolidated is we are going to externalize this SSO by deploying a new SSO server within each of the sites. So one in NYC, one in Houston, and one in Palo Alto. So now I've, ex now I've deployed a brand new SSO server in each site. The next step that I'm gonna do is I want to repoint the web, web server, uh, the, the web client service, the vCenter service, and the inventory service from this embedded deployment to the external SSO. So we're going to repoint those at each site. Uh, one thing I want to point out is right now at each site I only have one SSO box. Uh, I recommend uh, doing it in a simpler, simpler manner because you, you're going to be doing a migration. So the less you have to migrate or upgrade over, the better. Uh, and then add that secondary uh, PSC once you get to 6.5. But if one of your requirements is high availability right now, then you can add that secondary SSO box, uh, depending, again, on what your requirements are or your end goal. Uh, for right now, we're going to keep it simple. And later on, we'll add that secondary PSC once we get to 6.5. Um, so now we've externalized. We've uh, pointed our services. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to uninstall the embedded SSO on the first deployment. So we're going to do that at each site. And the reason we're doing that is when you do an upgrade or a migration, uh, the installer is going to go through and look. And it will if it sees that embedded SSO, it's going to use it and it will cause you troubles later because you're in reality you're pointed down to that external SSO. So we're going to uninstall it. And now we have a console, we have now a new consolidated SSO and uh, just for namesake, this is vSphere dot local. Uh, the next step that we want to do is we want to go ahead and migrate our Windows vCenter servers and our SSO boxes to an appliance. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to um, start off with all the SSO boxes or servers within our vSphere SSO domain. So the first step is we're going to run what's called the migration assistant on each of these SSO servers. And what the migration assistant does is two things. The first thing is it is running pre-checks to ensure that these SSO servers meet the criteria for our migration. Uh, the second thing that the migration assistant accomplishes is it's the data conduit that copies the data 
from the source, which here is SSO, and will uh, bring it over and transport it over to the newly deployed appliances during the migration process. Uh, so it's important to keep those running uh, during the, um, the entire migration. So now that we've ran the migration assistant on our SSO boxes, uh, everything met the criteria. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to deploy, uh, we have a management server. We're just going to write management that's going to run the migration tool. Now, this management server just needs to have a routable network to communicate with my SSO servers and my Windows vCenter servers. So what's going to happen is I'm now going to run the migration tool here. It's going to go out and it's going to talk to each of these migration assistants. Now, keep in mind, this is one at a time, right? I'm doing you know, the first one in NYC. I'm doing the next one in Houston, then the other one in Palo Alto, but one at a time, not all at the same time. Uh, so once that... Uh, once the migration uh, tool is talking to the migration assistant, we will be deploying a brand new vCenter, uh, v brand new uh, platform services controller and appliance based. So this one is going to be uh, PSC. Of course, it's in NYC. Uh, we are also going to have another one in Houston. And then we're going to have another one in Palo Alto. So now we've gone from a Windows-based SSO to an appliance-based SSO, or appliance-based PSC, which runs an SSO service uh, in 6.5. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and we are going to run the migration assistant on all our VUM servers. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to run it. We're going to start with NYC, run it there first. Um, you need to run the migration assistant there as part of the uh, process because if you try to run it on Windows and the Windows VC first, it's going to see that VUM is registered to that vCenter server and will produce an error message to tell you to go back and run it there. So we're going to run it there so we can copy the data. Um, we're going to run it on our Windows vCenter server. And then we're going to go back, uh, assuming that it meets the criteria, we're going to go back to the migration tool. And it's going to go out and it's going to talk to both of these guys. Um, and in essence, what's going to happen is this is going to deploy a brand new VCSA 6.5. Uh, again, in NYC, which includes, I'm going to write VUM in here, because in 6.5, VUM is part of the appliance, no longer requiring that uh, separate Windows server for the appliance. What's also going to happen is now, these guys are just going to shut down. We're not, we're not touching uh, the, uh, the source VCs or the source SSO or the source VUM, which provides us a simple rollback in case any issues occur during the migration process. Uh, and now I'm going to do the same thing in the other sites. I'm going to go through and run the migration assistant on VUM, and I'm going to run the migration assistant on my VC. Again, migration tool next, talking to each one, and then we're going, it's going to deploy a new VCSA with VUM included. And keep in mind, as part of the deployment process, stage one is deploy appliances. Stage two 
is configure and layer on that uh, existing data because by default during a migration we're bringing over the configuration and inventory. Uh, you have this option of bringing over historical and performance data but keep in mind that this will increase migration time. Um, but again, we're bringing over also the identity of the, v the source Windows vCenter server to the appliance, which means we're bringing over FQDN, IP address, um, certificates, UUID, which is huge because as far as any other solution is concerned, it's the same old uh, vCenter server, nothing's changed. With the added benefit of now VUM being part of the appliance, no longer requiring that ex uh, separate Windows server. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to come over here to our Palo Alto site. We're going to do the same thing. Run the Margra Migration Assistant on VUM, vCenter, and of course, we're going to have them go back to our management server, have the migration tool uh, communicate with the Migration Assistant, which will then Again, stage one, deploy a new uh, VCSA, 6.5, with an embedded VUM, and in stage, the next stage, it will layer on the configuration and all the uh, inventory and uh, whatnot. Also, as part of the inventory, uh, the, if you're running a regular V switch or a distributed switch, doesn't matter, we'll bring all that over, the migration uh, does all the heavy lifting for you. Um, so now we have a consolidated SSO domain. We have migrated from a Windows type deployment, uh, embedded or, or, or whatnot, but we've gone to an appliance based. Where we also accomplished uh, getting to enhanced link mode. So now when I log into any one of the web clients here, I'll be able to manage uh, any of my vCenter servers. So, for example, if I log into NYC, I'll be able to see the vCenter in NYC as well as Houston as well as Palo Alto and uh, manage them as, as well. So that covers our goals today. We were able to migrate slash upgrade from a vSphere 5.5 environment to a 6.5 environment. We were also able to get to enhanced link mode so we can manage any of our VCs from any one of our web clients, as well as consolidate our vSphere 5.5 SSO domain. Uh, one thing I want to make sure of note, especially with consolidation, is if you upgrade that first node from 5.5 to 6.0 before consolidating, then you cannot consolidate. So keep that in mind during your upgrade slash migration planning. Uh, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.